Um, now, here we go. Land Bond. Land Bond L8. All right. Raise your hand if you don't if you don't have any idea what this thing is. <laughs> uh, and I'll just while I wait for you all to raise your hands, I will tell you what it is and what we're doing with it. So there is a new project called Open Hasp, and Hasp stands for Home Assistant Switch Plate. If you've been watching my stuff for a long time, you'll know that, gosh, probably four years ago, I started building some of these Home Assistant Switch Plates, and it's and the 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 platform uh, has been changed several times. So the first iteration of this was done uh, by a guy named um, Luma. Um, at Arusha on GitHub, um, and it's been great. Uh, but now there's this next evolution, which is Open Hasp, and um, Open Hasp adds some functionality. It adds the ability to have different sized displays, which you could do with with um, HA Switch Play, which became Hasp One. But it was very difficult because um, Luma did all of the stuff based on one size screen, and if you wanted to do a different size screen, you had to redo a lot of stuff. This lets you, with a with some pretty simple lines of code, make your your widgets, your text, your buttons, whatever any size you want. So you can have everything from a, a one inch screen to a seven inch screen, and you can make uh, the buttons all different sizes. Open Hasp. So Open Hasp, because uh, of its nature, it will run on. A lot of different kinds of hardware and some of the hardware like this is a pretty simple little board which I have a couple of and I've been using and it's it works fine um, among all of the different hardware that you can use uh, exists this little smart switch here which is the Lanbon the name of it Lanbon L8 and it is a smart switch so this is the Lanbon L8 now Couple differences. You can, if you look back at the Amazon page here, there are several different versions. This is the Apple HomeKit version. The black one I have is the Apple HomeKit version. The white one I have is the Smart Life version. Uh, I would assume uh, the, the dimmer I didn't really want, um, and then the Living Smart Living. I don't know what Smart Living app is. Uh, the problem that we ran into with Smart Life was that it has a different, uh, a separate chip because it's Tuya. It's Tuya based. And for all their initial claims of loving the hacker community, Tuya has now made a much made things much more difficult for us by in, including this little chip. So this is the chip that uh, makes it work with Smart Life and, and they could have done it with the ESP32, but they didn't. They have their own little chip. And I know there are plenty of people working on hacking this little chip to make it work, to make it so we can do our stuff with it. But for now, as far as this one goes, I tried and tried and tried and, and and at least had several people indicate that it was a lost cause. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, the $10 that you would spend to buy the Apple HomeKit version instead of the Smart Life version is totally worth it so that you don't have to deal with this chip and all the extra flashing. You can see I tried to solder on some wires there and it was just a freaking mess. So bye-bye. So that one, if anybody wants to buy a slightly, a slightly used, partially disassembled Landbon L8 for Smart Life, let me know because I've got one on the cheap. <laughs> this is, however, the um, version which is made for Apple HomeKit. And the great part about it is, oh, there is no Tuya chip. Yay, bye-bye Tuya chip. And good riddance. This is the resolution of the screen. I wrote that on there because we're going to need that. That would mean, should mean, that we can flash this. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I am gonna set this thing back to three volts. I don't wanna do no damage. So what I've got here in, uh, is my FTDI adapter. So this, this chip you can't just plug in, you can see there's no USB, so you can't just plug in USB here to flash this. A lot of these other devices, um, a lot of these other screens have USB on them and you can just, plug them right in and voila it'll flash okay so this is my ftdi adapter um this is five volts 
there. Ground is going to be here. I flashed many, many, many Sonoffs with this guy. And then we've got TX here and RX here. So TX is green. So TX down here is going to go to RX. The close one is the top, I believe. Ah, ground is the top here. This is RX, so it's going to go to the TX here. And then 5 volts is going to go next to the TX. Great. And then we need one more thing, which is going to be a jumper that will go from GPIO 0, which is actually under. I should have done this first. Silly boy. GPIO 0 is actually under RX. We need another wire in the little port that is under the RX. So stick that guy in there. And that will need to be grounded when we power this thing up. Now I'll put my RX wire back in. Ah. Let's before we do anything, let's just we can just power this up. I'm just gonna plug this in. Okay, so the land bond, this is how it's starting up. This is the normal software on it. If you wanted to use it, you could. We're not gonna use this, but that's just showing that this is not in a um, flash mode, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna unplug it again, and then we're gonna put it in flash mode. Now I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna stick it on here because that's grounded, and then start it back up. I should be able to take that off. and Now it should be in flash mode. While it's in flash mode, we're going to go here. Yep, it's still in flash mode. We're going to go here, getting started, and then there's going to be firmware installation. All right, and we're going to go to the OpenHasp web installer. And then we're going to tell it we have a Lanbon L8. And we're going to hit install. And then that's the serial port that I'm connected to. And we're going to hit connect. And it's going to be beautiful. And the first try, open hasp, erase device, next, install, holy cow. How often does that happen? So far, so good. Wow. I mean, it's probably a little bit too early for high fives, but that was pretty good. Okay, well now installation complete, next. Um, we already installed OpenHasp, so now what we're going to do is go to the logs and console. Now, you can do it. Actually, it's not showing on the screen, interestingly. See that? Normally, maybe I need to reboot it once, but normally this would be, uh, like on some of these other devices, it has shown the little thing to log in. This isn't showing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the console here to put in my Wi-Fi stuff. SSID. We're going to connect this one to Dr. Z's NOT network, okay? But then I'm going to move it over here because now i got to put the password in. Uh, so the password. So then we're going to go P-A-S-S -S space, and then we will put in the password. I do love, love, love that you can do this stuff from the console. I don't think it doesn't seem to be communicating. Hmm. Let me just power it off and power back on again. Maybe that's what we need to do. Go back, see if it's gonna, so if I do this, this just lets me go to the logs. I don't really need to do this. I can just use this and go to the logs. And then if I reset it, why is it not going? Maybe... Oh, 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 here it is. So I did need to power it down. Oh, don't, don't look at my thing. <laughs> Reboot the L8 manually first, since ESP tool can't do it on the land bond automatically. Ah, I see, okay, okay, okay. Well now, I could, with my phone, point at this uh, this thing and connect it, or I could do it here. This I really like this SSID. Okay, did that work? SSID. Did that work? It did not seem to work. Well, let's do it again. Have I tried turning it off and on again? Hello, this is. IT. Well, what we're going to do then instead, we'll just do it this way. We're going to use the camera and that guy and then join. Okay, there's some there's some stuff. Okay, now I've got now I can put my Wi-Fi stuff here. Oh, and it did. It did take it. 
it did take it. So I could put the password in. Um, I could put the password in on, on here. I could do P-A-S-S -S space and then, oh, yep, there it goes. Save settings. There it goes. Yay. Okay. Now, hopefully it won't show my password. <laughs> but now you've got, we got the console stuff here. And it's got an IP address. That's muy importante. But it also shows you on here, which again, by the way, Francis is flipping brilliant. So thank you. Says what your IP address is right there. And we're ready to go. We are golden, 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 golden. Now we know what the IP address is. We're going to go up here and we're going to go to that IP address. And there we are. 